it's London, it's data, it's big, it's big data London. Scott Taylor, the data whisperer here, going over to the Calibra booth to talk to Reese Griffiths. Let's see what he has to say. How's the traditional data management landscape changing now that we've got so much unstructured data? I think you hit it, which is we have so much unstructured data, right? When we think about the governance industry and data management as a whole, the last 15, 20, 30 years even, it's all been focused on structured data, databases, tables, and so on. And frankly, that's all that's mattered. And then what we saw a few years back with the rise of generative AI, these kind of new intelligent models that are fundamentally built on this unstructured content, it basically means that the companies that want to succeed in the AI race need to start thinking about how they use that data. And in most companies, around 80 to 85% of that data is unstructured. Wow. It means like PDFs, Word documents, emails, cool transcripts videos, audio, images, the whole suite of unstructured content that frankly has never received any attention from a governance standpoint. So I think the big shift is unstructured data, which is how do we find out what we have, what is usable, how do we contextualize it, and therefore how do we enable this new wave of AI adoption? It makes me think there's probably a lot of people on the business side and the enterprise who don't even realize some of those things could be data. If you look at the implications of not investing in an unstructured data foundation, People's minds go to things like governance, you know, I don't know what is sensitive or the time that it takes to set up a new AI project because I haven't cataloged my data. But one of the biggest things is what about all the untapped value? I was just chatting to someone from an insurance company just now. We were talking about all of the thousands of hours of cool transcripts they've recorded and how if they had a good way to tag and build taxonomies on that data. So there is just a treasure trove of information that could be surfaced if the right protocols are in place. How do some of the features that you're bringing to Calibra really enhance the offer? We've built this very powerful workflow that leverages natural language, so large language models predominantly, to tag and structure unstructured content. That's very powerful, but at the enterprise level, what companies need is a system. What I mean by system is it's fine to do this kind of one-off tagging task, but what we need to do is make sure that every time new data is being generated, we're continuously tagging it. We also need to govern those taxonomies. Different data domains have different owners who own different ontologies. So we need to build kind of the governance layer around that tagging framework to enable it to be a systematic and scalable system. So the first thing that's exciting for me is we can now, with the kind of Calibra ecosystem, build that governance framework around this very powerful tagging layer to set up a governed tagging system. The second piece is obviously as Calibra has been working on structured data for the last 17 years or so. Now with like the rise of agents and more intelligent AI tooling, there is an increasing need to bring together unstructured data. So for us, it's really this one unified vision, a unified catalog, unstructured plus structured data together, which I think for companies opens a whole new world of kind of possible use cases when they think about what they can do with their data. We've got the cataloging platform, but then to bring in all this new data yeah. and have it in there, just make it accessible across the enterprise. And that can be a catalog, but it could also be a data marketplace. Mm. You know, people want somewhere where their data consumers, be it an analyst or a data scientist, can go to find the relevant files for what they're doing, to filter for relevance, for sensitivity, for quality, and quickly set up the relevant knowledge base for their use case. When I talk to customers, they're like, that's great, but can I include both structured and unstructured data? Mm -hmm. So I think where Calibra now becomes very unique in this space is providing that unified, unstructured, plus structured data vision. So in the structured world, they talk about data products. But yeah. when it comes to the unstructured world, does that really work? Are there other things people should be thinking about building? What is the equivalent of a data product in the unstructured data world? So we're speaking to customers, they're thinking about unstructured content in the form of knowledge, mm. which sometimes is helpful. And what do we mean by knowledge product? For us, we conceptualize it a bit as a funnel. The first level is, can I use this data? Which is more around, is it classified? Is it sensitive? Is it restricted? Of course, that depends on the use case, but there is something high level where you want to scan everything and know the sensitivity. Then you want to know, should I use this data? Which is more around data quality. So again, in the structured world, we had very clear dimensions of what data quality meant. In the unstructured data world, it's pretty undefined. We talk about uniqueness, relevance, bias, and so on, timeliness. And then once you've kind of vetted for data quality and sensitivity, the next part of the kind of knowledge product funnel is all about enriching with metadata. And metadata, what we really mean is using intelligent models to pull out contextual tags or attributes from the data that A, helps humans find the relevant files or piece of information, but B, helps AI systems and agents find the relevant information. And there's often a distinction between the metadata and the semantics that can be most helpful for us 
versus what could be most helpful for an AI or a chatbot tool mm. going through the data. So really is that final sensitivity, quality, metadata enrichment for both humans and AI. And in the end, you're building basically these kind of knowledge assets for both technical and non-technical users. You just gave your talk a great talk, turning unstructured data into fuel for AI. Mm -hmm. What are some of the key points you wanted to leave with the audience? I think the key theme overall for us is all around redefining what metadata means and how we create metadata. So when I say metadata, I always have to say this, people's minds go to who has access to this file? When was it last edited? Who is the owner? That is metadata, but in the world of kind of AI and unstructured data, we're also talking about deriving really contextual semantics, themes, topics from the data and doing that without rule-based systems. Mm. So, you know, historically people will be using kind of pattern recognition. We're talking about using large language models predominantly to generate very contextual metadata describing anything you possibly want about a document. The second kind of core theme that we were talking about is making metadata hierarchical. To get started, you do have to start with some form of set of tags that are relevant to the business. Users tend to be lazy or not quite as distinct in terms of their tagging. How does AI help this? So we think a lot about how do we use AI to improve AI and what that looks like if you're generating kind of natural language tags. There's several steps. One step is simply taking a prompt that a lazy user might provide, very rough kind of description, and auto-generating kind of a best practice template of whether I'm trying to classify or extract something, which would include a description to the LLM around what to look for that gives high confidence, low confidence, what positive examples, negative examples. So that's one piece, like refining the prompt. The second thing is how can we create training examples for that model so that every time it's running, it has more reference points. So it's again, allowing humans to come in and basically validate examples as correct or incorrect and then passing those into the model every time it's running. And one of the other things we're doing is also, if you're generating metadata, we're actually forcing the model to give evidence to justify why it created the metadata it did. And then we're using another model to score how good that evidence was relative to what the user was actually trying to do in the first place. And this allows us to generate confidence scoring and everything we're doing. So. There are different layers to make the system accurate and ways to leverage AI in doing so. Can you share a couple of client examples, customer examples where people have really put this into play? One of the companies we worked with was a large food and beverage manufacturer. And their challenge is they have thousands of supplier contracts. And what they previously had was a team of legal experts going combing through these contracts, trying to find, does this contract have an auto renewal clause? Does it have an exclusivity term? What is the volume commitment? Is there an upcoming pricing change? And so we helped them basically build this automated metadata tagging flow that would pass through all of these contracts and pull out automatically, is there an auto renewal clause, yes or no? Is there a pricing change coming up? If so, when? So they could basically say, actually, these 30 contracts, we're all going to auto renew next month. We're actually going to cancel them because we don't need those. And we immediately have direct business impact. Another example is an investment firm we worked with. A lot of investment firms are trying to speed up their due diligence when they're making investments. And what that means is there's typically like a data dump of call transcripts, market reports, broker reports, pitch decks. And typically you'd have analysts going through and trying to evaluate. All of them have jumped on this kind of idea of building a chatbot where I just ask questions across that yeah. knowledge base of 5,000 documents, which is okay, except the accuracy is stuck around like 70, 80%. And also there can be sensitive data in there if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. So we've helped a financial service company basically build a metadata layer. We did a few things. Firstly, as you might know, in any kind of professional service environment or any company, you might have 10 versions of the same document in your folder, right? So firstly, it's how do we deduplicate and find what is the most relevant up-to-date version of a pitch deck or a market report? So we're only pulling the latest data. The second thing is sensitivity. Can we find if there's any mentions of PII, PHI, but also things like if you're taking in call transcripts, people talking about their weekend plans in the first few minutes of a call, this kind of sensitive data that you want to filter out of that chatbot. And then the final level was adding in a contextual metadata layer to tag like key themes, key topics, who is the author that allowed the model to find the relevant piece of information more accurately, taking that retrieval accuracy from like the 80% to more than 90%. All right. Awesome. Super. Awesome. Good job. Thank you so no, much. Really nice cool. job.